Good morning, Pastor Sean here. Today is uh, Wednesday, Wednesday, October 11th, and this is your morning prayer. So let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, Ezekiel 9 through 12, and we pick up right where we left off yesterday um, in the middle of one of Ezekiel's visions that uh, Ezekiel had been taken to the temple, and he's witnessing all of the horrible things going on, all the abominations that the people are are doing, that they're bringing into the temple, um, seeing all of their idolatry, and it's just, it's, it's a horrific vision for him. And so now, uh, in chapter 9, God commands, uh, he sees, Ezekiel sees these men, one, one man wearing a, a white linen cloth um, robe, and, or, <clears throat> excuse me, or clothed in white linen, and then he sees the guards. And God instructs uh, the the. <clears throat> Excuse me. God instructs the man in the white linen to go out among the people and to mark on their foreheads um, all the people who um, who were distraught about the idolatry. So all the ones who saw the idolatry and they were grieved by it. They they didn't agree with it. They you know the the believers, the ones who still held to God. Uh, and then to the guards, God instructed them to go out and slaughter everybody except for those who were marked by the man in the white linen. So we kind of get this nice little echo of the 10th plague um, back in Egypt uh, where, with the Passover, where God would pass over his judgment for those who are marked by the blood of the Lamb. Um, and also then foreshadows, of course, the last day in which uh, God's judgment would come to all people except for those marked by the blood of the Lamb, you know, those who are, who are believers, those of the faith. So we see kind of a, a, a similar thing going on here in, in that vision. And... Kind of the shocking thing that uh, throughout these next few chapters that just fills Ezekiel with um, great sadness, just terror, um, stuff that he can't even believe, is that um, God is leaving his temple. Okay, uh, God instructs the, the or, uh, tells them to fill the temple with these dead bodies, to bring in all these dead bodies, which would then defile the temple, would make it unclean. So just the the very notion that God is is allowing his temple to be defiled and made unclean is indicating that God is saying, "This is no longer my home. This is not my house anymore." And this just strikes Ezekiel right to his core. Um, chapter ten then moves into this this um, this movement that we have of God leaving the temple and we, we see the cherubim they, they show up again just all their incredibly wild appearance uh, the cherubim are there as God's glory begins to leave the temple and then he takes uh, or instructs some of the coals uh, from the cherubim are, are taken to then spread over the city so destruction and fire upon the city as he as he leaves. Uh, chapter uh, 10, oh no, that was chapter 10. Chapter 11, sorry. Chapter 11, um, Ezekiel sees God's judgment on the rulers of Israel, uh, the leaders, um, for their role in causing the people to turn from God and to worship idols. You know, the, the, the leaders were supposed to lead the people in to God, but they instead were leading them away from God. Um, now, verses 16 through 21 do have some hope. There's a little little spark of hope in here where um, God tells Ezekiel that, you know, he would preserve a remnant. There would be a small remnant that God would preserve and that one day he would bring back into the land. So we have this little gospel nugget right in the middle there. Um, but then <laughs> that it's the only brief bright spot in the whole thing because right after that and before the chapter ends, uh, we have the glory of God leaving not only the temple, but also leaves Jerusalem. So uh, God leaving this place, which just is is the worst possible thing that Ezekiel could behold. Uh, chapter 12 then moves into some some more object lessons, some more prophesying that, that Ezekiel does. Um, the, the object lesson that Ezekiel is to act out is to 
go into exile. He's, he's supposed to act out this, you know, taking his, his baggage for exile and slinging it over his shoulder and, and going off and not looking back. And it, and it seems a little silly that he should do this, <laughs> considering that the people, well, Ezekiel and the people he's with, the people that he's prophesying to, are in fact in exile. <laughs> so it's like he's saying, oh, and God's going to take them into exile. It's like, yeah, we already are. But the point that he's making is, is that, look, everybody else, all those other people still left in Jerusalem, they're going to be coming too. And the people um, who were currently exiled in Babylon did not necessarily believe that God would allow that to happen. They didn't, they didn't believe that God would leave his temple or leave Jerusalem. They didn't believe that God would allow this total destruction and defilement of, of the holy place. So um, they needed to be reminded and told over and over and over again, this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen. Um, he then moves on to prophesying about uh, Ezekiel, uh, Ezekiel, Zedekiah, um, how, how um, Zedekiah would be taken and brought to Babylon and he would die there. Um, even adding in the, the, the fun little detail that as Zedekiah is taken, he would not see the land that he's going from and he wouldn't see the land that he's being brought to. Because if you recall from before, um, Nebuchadnezzar had Zedekiah's eyes removed from him. Um, so he couldn't see anything. So uh, prophesies about the capture of Zedekiah. Then some more prophesying about the siege of Jerusalem, about uh, the food and water uh, that would be scarce and lacking during the siege. Um, he gave a word to those who um, didn't believe that God would allow the destruction, who, who would hear Ezekiel and say, oh, no, you're out of your mind. Of course this wouldn't happen. And then uh, Ezekiel prophesied to those who, um, who believed that or allowed that, you know what? Yeah, we, we can see that destruction is a possibility. But hey, it's not going to come for a long time. It's, you know, we don't have to worry about this. It's not going to happen anytime soon. So Ezekiel is, is prophesying to them saying, no, it's, it's coming real quick. It's going to be very, very, very soon. Um, so we have uh, just a continuation of, of these themes and the prophecies and, and the, uh, uh, the ways that, that Ezekiel is really trying to hammer home to these people that, hey, <laughs> God's judgment is not done. You think that he was done by allowing us into exile. It's going to get worse and it's going to get worse and it's going to get worse. Um, and I think overarching terrible thing over these chapters is just the vision of God leaving and, and his, taking his presence away from the temple and from Jerusalem. So this would have been incredibly difficult for Ezekiel to, to see and have to contend with. Um, you know, he, he is faithful to his calling. He, he delivers these messages, but, uh, just imagine the, the, the crushing weight of it that he would have to carry with him. Uh, so very, very challenging job that he had to do, but he did it. Uh, the people needed to hear it as, as much as he didn't want to share that. And as much as the people probably didn't want to hear it, they needed to hear it. So, so there you go. Ezekiel versus, uh, versus chapters nine through 10. Let me try that again. Ezekiel chapters 9 through 12. There you go. <laughs> Let us pray. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Well, blessings to you on this Wednesday. Uh, congratulations for making it through half the week. <laughs> hope your week has gone well so far, and I hope you have a great day. So until tomorrow, peace be with you.